Looking back, 1979 now emerges as a pivotal year in the recent history of our species. On the 6th of October this year, the US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, increased interest rates by 20 points. This act, which on paper appears of little significance, opened the gates to a whole new breed of free market capitalism, which as the result of reduced regulation would spread its way all over the globe. It signified the switch between Fordism and post-Fordism as the predominant economic system of production, from the disciplinary societies of late modernism, characterised by Foucault, to the control societies which constitute our present reality. It was the beginning of a carefully choreographed and intricately planned neoliberal project which would serve the restoration of naked class power to an economic elite, radically transforming the way in which all our lives would operate in its way. Our attitudes to work, politics, society, our relationships to one another, even the internal structurings of our own mind, would never be the same again. It's no coincidence that it was on the 4th of May 1979 that Margaret Thatcher came to power in the United Kingdom. She was, of course, instrumental in overseeing this revolution. What is coincidental, however, is that it was also in 1979, on the 11th of March to be precise, that my own life began its trajectory. The rapidly changing society into which I was born not only prove fundamental in shaping the artist I would become, but it would also prove key in determining the mentality with which I would come to visualise my future, to plan my career. Thatcher's children, as my generation are known, were indoctrinated to believe that the world owed us a living. Success, she said, was a mixture of having a flair for a thing that you were doing, Knowing that it's not enough, that you've got to have hard work and a certain sense of purpose. It was simply a question of making the right career choice. If we aimed for the top, we had just as much chance of getting there as anyone else. All we had to do was look out for number one. The secret she taught us was to have a strategy. To find your work for every day and then work your plan. To think about what you wanted your lives to be like in the future and then work flat out towards that goal. In hindsight, it now seems inevitable that my life took the course it did. Entering art school in 1997, the year the seminal sensation exhibition at Royal Academy of Arts took place, we could see success being played out before our very eyes. A group of young British artists just one generation older were now living the dream. As 18-year-old students, we were able to visualise the paths we wanted our lives to take, to see exactly where we wanted to find our fortune. Like most of our art school peers, I was from an above-average social background, raised in suburbia by a middle-class family of teachers. And as hands having notes, this added social capital gave me the flair, self-assurance and sense of audacity, which now seemed so essential to commodify and sell myself, to keep going regardless of rejection and failure, with my eyes firmly fixed on the prize. My career trajectory led me blinkered along a familiar path. A BA honours degree in Fine Art from Nottingham Trent University, a postgraduate diploma in Fine Art from Goldsmith College, when nearly all my YBA role models have been before me. It was as though every incremental step took me closer towards my goal, towards success. Finally, I won a scholarship to study on the Master of Fine Art program at Glasgow School of Art, yet another prestigious art school to add to my expanding curriculum later. But what I haven't banked on, however, was that on the very same day that I was heading up the M1 to Glasgow to begin this new stage of my life, the global economic order was fast collapsing around us into its own new distinct epoch, taking with it the belief systems which have been carefully constructed around it over the past 29 years. 
For it was on the 15th of September 2008, the investment bank Lehman Brothers Holdings Inc. filed the biggest bankruptcy in US history with more than $60 billion of debt. Over the course of the next year, a slew of bailouts took place all over the world to prevent other banks going under. The neoliberal project had in every sense been discredited. The ideology in which, knowing me or not, my own life's trajectory had been modelled was now on the scrap heap. Society appeared had reached a hiatus, a ground zero amidst a sea of ideological rubble. Lots of suggestions emerged about what had gone wrong and lots of questions about where we should go next. From the privilege of my funded MFA place, I was in, able to enter into my own period of self-reflection about the path that I had so blindly been following. Was the vision I held in my life in the future essentially a delusion based on a now defunct model of success from the past? Was I suffering from the self-deceit, hands up in diagnosis to be prevalent in young artists, coupled with a complete disavowal of the negative side effects of my complicity in the system of capital. With a sudden overwhelming urgency, it felt essential that I begin to question how I could reconcile my career choice and the entrepreneurial methodology with which I was pursuing it with the harsh realities that both science and now science fiction are predicting the future actually holds in store. Okay. So that extract just is kind of gives a sets the scene really for the rest of the, the essay, which I'm kind of trying to unpick some of the questions that I raised in that last um, paragraph as we as we move through. Um, but the ending doom that I'm referring to is essentially the environmental crisis or climate change, which is likely to unfold over the next over the next century. Um, and this dissertation was written, um, well it was written last summer and I began researching for it kind of around about this time last year, which was just after Copenhagen, um, the International, United Nations International Climate um, Summit took place and essentially failed to, to meet any resolution. So at that time, as I'm sure you all remember, it was in the news a lot. Um, but since then, the um, the kind of the climate change has kind of completely disappeared off the media agenda and has been replaced by this alternative doom, um, which I'll talk about later, which is the more immediate um, funding cuts to public services and things that are happening um, that kind of take over have taken over the, the headlines for the time being. Um, but this, this graph which I've got are up on the projection at the moment was what I used to kind of preface the dissertation. And it's extracted from the government's official response to um, the Copenhagen conference, um, which gives an estimate of the median temperature rise, global temperature rise over the course of the next century. And it, the line across the middle um, marks what is kind of referred to by the majority of scientists as a tipping point at which climate change becomes, well, run, kind of runaway climate change in the, uh, after a certain point, which is two degrees um, median temperature rise, that uh, the oceans are kind of diluted to a, to a certain level because ice caps have melted and that there are all of these other stores of carbon that exist at the bottom of the oceans and in other places which will then kind of be released and things will be going to warm up beyond control. So the big question that I was posing to myself in this dissertation and I'm posing to you now I suppose is that how could I, and how could anybody else, continue to carry on um, worrying about or following these 
kind of closely mapped out career trajectories down a specific path um, that our role models before us have gone. Um, when we can no longer even assume that we would be living in the same conditions, um, that the same resources would be available, or that the same opportunities would even exist. When the real truth is, the truth that, that it doesn't seem that, I mean, any of us are kind of able to, to face up to, but the, the truth that the scientific evidence is pointing towards is that we're kind of on the brink of a very different world. 